Hello everyone and welcome back to one more video. We are solving the minimum perimeter rectangle from lesson number 10. So we are given an area of a rectangle and this area can fit to different dimensions. For example, instead of taking this shape, we can apply to a different shape and still we would have A times B for this first shape equal to A times B to the second shape, meaning the area in the first shape is equal to the area of the uh, second shape, although we have different dimensions in the second case. However, the perimeter, which is a plus b times 2, would be different in these two cases. And our function should return the minimum perimeter that we can find for one same area, but in different shapes. So we must take into account that a and b are integers, and we are given a constant area, which is the number n, meaning the rectangle area, on which we are going to apply our operations. If we follow the example provided on the Codality website for the area equal 30, but then we could have a different shape, different dimensions. 2 times 15 is also 30. Then you have a third shape, 3 times 10, also 30. And 5 times 6, also 30. But these different shapes have different perimeters, and we must return the minimum perimeter that we could find among these multiple shapes. So considering the values we have seen, 130, 215, 310, and 56, we have different perimeters, and we must return the 22, which is the minimal value of this perimeter in this example. So of course, we can start a brute approach in the sense that we will iterate over the first width, for example, equal to 1, then a equal to 2, then 3, then 4, and 5, and so on. And for each iteration, we can check if 30 or n modulus a is equal to 0, in which case 30 is divided as an integer by the value of a, it would yield an other uh, integer, which is the other dimension of the rectangle. And for each couple of dimensions, we are going to calculate the uh, perimeter, checking for each iteration or each couple of dimensions if we have a new minimal value. And at the end, when we have exhausted all the cases, all the couple of dimensions, we can return the minimum value that we have found. But as always on Codility, we are looking for efficiency. So instead of iterating over all the possible values of dimensions, we are going to limit our search up to square root of the area n, just as we have done for the count factors example in the previous video. If you are not familiar with this procedure, I would strongly advise you go back to that example, check it out first, and then come back because this is almost the same type of solution here. So instead of testing the dimension of A from 1 up to, let's say, 30, ideally, we are going to limit it up to A equals square root of N. Because after this value, we are repeating almost the same computation operations, which are unnecessary in this case. For example, after A equal to 5, where we had 5 times 6 equal 30, then if I increment 5, it would become 6, and then I would have 6 times 5 equal 30. Then if I increment even more, I'm going to reach 10, where we have a modulus equal 0, so 10 times 3 equal 30, then 15 times 2. So these operations were already done. We don't have to repeat them in reverse order. And this is solved by limiting our search to a certain maximum value of a, which is equal to square root of n. But there is also a trick that would make our task even shorter. It's the fact that the perimeter is minimal when a and b are almost equal. And in this case, we are looking for a square shape instead of a rectangle. So in other words, the minimum value is found, the minimum value of perimeter is found for A and B dimensions where the rectangle would be resembling to a square as much as possible because we are taking integers here. So in brief, we are looking for the shape of the area N that would be the closest to a square. And this is when we will have the minimal perimeter. So if this is still not very clear for you, let's try to write this in C++ and in Python and see how it works. So this is our solution function in C++. It takes the uh, n integer, which is the area of the rectangle. And for i equal to square root of n, we are going to limit our search up to uh, i, which means one, one of the sides of the rectangle is at least equal to one. We cannot go down to zero because it's meaningless. The rectangle doesn't have an area in this case. And we decrement i for each iteration. If n, the area modulus one of the sides of the rectangle is equal to zero, 
meaning we can divide these integers and not have some remains, we are going to return the perimeter in this case. So why do we return immediately the perimeter? Why we are not checking if it's the minimum uh, perimeter or not? Simply because we started at square root n, meaning we started with the closest we can be to a square shape. And this is geometrically, this is the case where we have the minimal perimeter. So we are starting from the closest case to our minimal perimeter. And if it works, the first dimensions where we have a good divisions among integers, this is our solution. We don't have to test further. And therefore we can return twice i plus n over i, meaning the first side a and n over i is b, as we have explained in the algorithm section. This is the Python version of the solution. We have the n number, which is the area of the rectangle, and for i in range between the square root of n. But we have to cast it into an integer because Python will automatically detect it as a float and it doesn't suit our solution. And we have included the upper or the lower range as zero because zero is excluded in Python. So the range function will automatically exclude this side of the range, which is zero. And then the step is minus one, meaning we need to decrement our i index or our i variable for each iteration. Then if n modulus i is equal to zero, meaning we have our solution and we return perimeter, which is twice i plus n over i. And we have to cast it into an integer because again, Python will consider it as a float. And this is it for the solution. It scores 100% in both C++ and Python. Good luck to you and stay tuned for more.